Clothes Sniffer. Hi all. Just want to start by saying how much I enjoy coming here to read all your stories. I never thought I'd have a potential one to share with you all. But here goes. This happened about a week ago. I'm currently nearing the ending of a postgraduate degree here in the UK, so with all the work that's been going on and looming deadlines, I've found my sleep patterns to be almost non-existent. It is not out of ordinary for me to be awake until 5 or 6 a.m., and then to be up again by about 9 or 10 a.m. It gets a bit tedious and tiring, but I persevere for the time being. Anyways, as I tend to pull all-nighters, I usually go out to my back garden for the occasional cigarette break. Nightly occurrence, nothing out of the ordinary. Until this one night last week. For some context, I live in a block of four houses, and my house is the one of those in the middle. This means that my back garden is pretty enclosed, but directly connected to the two gardens on either side. They're separated by some fencing, so there is some privacy but not much. Behind our garden is a desolate field, which is right next to the main road into the village which I live. Easy access for anyone, but it would certainly take a lot of effort to work your way through a muddy field just to find your way into somebody's back garden. On this night, it was approaching 3 a.m., and I went out back for my cigarette. We have lights at the back of our houses, which we can switch on manually from the inside, but as they light up the entire back of every house, I tend to leave it off so as not to draw attention to myself and not wake anybody up. I make my way to the top of my garden, sit on my perfectly situated smoking bench, and light up in the moonlit 3 a.m. evening. It was a completely still and quiet evening, no breeze but pleasantly warm. All I could just about see was the next door neighbor's clothes still on the wash line. It's been nice and sunny here for the past few weeks, so people have a habit of leaving their clothes out overnight, so they're completely dry by morning. I'm nearing the end of my cigarette, and I'm thinking to myself, whether it's a good time to head to bed or not, and then I can faintly make out what I believe to be someone... to be someone breathing. I dispose of my cigarette, and sit there quietly for a few seconds, and there it is again! Faint breathing, which happens to be getting closer. I continue to think nothing of this, and think it's my mind playing tricks on me. To be fair, I'm pretty sleep deprived and it's almost pitch black, so a completely plausible explanation, and then I see it. I can just make the silhouettes of a person in my neighbor's back garden. I, I have no idea which way they came, but there, they're standing about 15 feet away from me. I assume for a split second that it's my neighbor coming out late to collect their washing, but why would they do this in the darkness? I said they're completely still and observe, and this person is now unintelligibly whispering to themselves. I deduce by the voice, it's the voice of a man, and I try to make out what they're saying. And all I continue to hear is this heavy breathing, along with this nonsensical whispering. At this point, I begin to get weirded out, and I'm fully aware of how tense I've become. I struggle to not make a sound or draw attention to myself, and just continue to watch. Part fascination, part worry. And then this guy does something which makes me silently gasp. He starts sniffing my neighbor's clothes. And I'm talking borderline snorting here. He continues to do this for what seems like hours, but in reality, would have been less than about two minutes. He works his way up the clothesline, and back down, and back up again, and back down. He eventually decides that enough is enough, and mumbles a bit more to himself, and disappears back into the night as quickly as he appeared. And here I am, still sitting there, completely stunned and wondering if this just happened. I sit on the bench for about a minute after he leaves, and finally manage to bolt it straight into my house and lock the door. I make my way upstairs and call it a night. Safe to say that. I didn't sleep much that night, not from fear, but from the complete weirdness of the situation I witnessed. I speak to my neighbors the next day, and they don't mention anything out of the ordinary. I continue to have my late night cigarettes, and haven't seen or heard anything since. So. Close snorting person, let's not have the displeasure of meeting again. Disclaimer, smoking is bad for you, so don't do it.
the drill bit. It happened almost 10 years ago. I was 15 years old. And for some particular reason that I don't remember, I had to go to the store at 3 a.m. in the morning. Back in the days, I regularly had all-nighters watching movies, working on projects for school, playing video games, etc. So most probably, I decided to go for provisions and stuff like that. Now, I live in a quiet neighborhood, relatively close to the heart of the city. However, the closest 24-7 shot was a mile away at the time. Given the fact that I was 15 years old at the time, driving to the shop was a no-go. I decided to go on for a refreshing walk, as there were a lot of stray dogs in my neighborhood, which at times went in packs and jumped on people. I took a 20 centimeter drill bit and tuck it in my back pocket just in case. I went for the more secluded streets of my neighborhood, as I wanted to shorten the distance as much as I can and follow a straight line as much as possible. As I was passing by a former kindergarten, rumored to be a safe house for junkies and the type, a faint noise broke the graveyard silence around me. I turned around and noticed two bulky, two bulky figures approximately 20 meters back. For an instant, it seemed kind of weird as it was around 3 a.m. It was cold and I couldn't find a reasonable explanation for why people would be out at that hour. A moment afterwards, I shrugged it off and continued my journey. However, as I tend to be paranoid at times, I peeked back every 20 feet, and those two guys were there every time. Note that I was not walking along a straight line along the road. The route to the shop consists of taking left, right, left, right turns, almost at each block. I thought that maybe they were headed to the shop too, but kind of hastened up. So did the men behind me. I decided to take four consecutive right turns to check if they were following me, or if they were just sharing the same route. As I made a complete circle and ended where I started, I, I turned back, and those men were still watching with the same pace as me keeping their distance. I calmly walked to the next corner, slowly pulling the drill bit from my back pocket. As I reached the corner and lost sight of the two stalkers, I sprinted as fast as possible for the remaining 300 meters of the shop. I entered in with the drill bits in my hand, did my best to assure the guy at the register I have no intent of hurting or robbing anyone and I bought whatever I needed. Afterwards, I ordered a cab for the way back and waited for it in the store. As I walked out from the store to the cab, I looked around, but couldn't see anything suspicious and arrived home safely. It may be my imagination, but I heard a man's voice around the corner of the shop just as I was going into the cab, as if they were anticipating me on the way back. Overnights at the library. So, I just recently found the subreddit and decided to post my strange experience based on its similarities to others I've read on here. Context, I work overnights at the university library in the city where I live. It's a nice job where I mostly don't have much work to do besides get up every 30 minutes to push in chairs and clean up debris, etc. Anyways, early in the semester, when no students stay overnight at the library on Thursday nights, I had a strange experience. It was about 4 in the morning, and I already been around the library a couple times and established, so I thought, that no one was in the building, besides me and the guy at the security desk, which is out of my view. Anyways, around this time, a very large man approaches the desk, at which I work at, and starts to fill around the staplers and tape, which are left out for student use. I ask him if I can help him with anything, and he responds, I don't know. Is there anything you think you can help me with, nigger? He starts to laugh very loudly and quickly walks away from the desk. Of course, I'm offended and taken aback, so I go over to the security desk and explain the situation. The security fellow is dumbfounded. He says no one has come in for hours, and we each have been around the library several times and seen nobody. We do a sweep of the library, but find nobody. At this point, things are a bit uneasy, but I return to my desk. By my desk is a door to an empty office, which is always locked. As I begin to get back to reading my book, I hear the slightest of noises behind me. Trying to sneak out of the office is the guy with a thin cord in his hand. I yell, oh shit, 
as he lets out an inhuman scream, which chilled me to the bone. At this point, I'm up out of my chair, ready to go at it with this guy. But instead of coming after me, the guy just lays down on the floor laughing and screaming and talking about killing niggers. Not cool. Anyways, security guy calls the police, and they take the mentally deranged fellow away. He had a bunch of wire on him along with some other interesting materials. A hammer, alarm clock, canteen full of piss, a decent amount of cheese, and brass knuckles. Police tells us later that he was MIA from a halfway house nearby and had a stolen keycard, which he used to crash in the empty office for a couple days. Guy at the gas station. Not my scariest encounter, but the most recent one. I'll post the scarier ones when I'm a bit better at this. So my boyfriend and I were pulling an all-nighter, being the computer addicts that we are, and about 7 in the morning we decided to run to the gas station, just outside of our neighborhood for some energy drinks. We pull up and park on the side of the building, away from the busy pumps, and he goes in by himself to grab the drinks. As he enters, I see a man at the corner of the store, leaned up against the wall, drinking something from a paper bag. He eyes him as he enters and then flicks his attention to me. I get an uneasy feeling but stays calm because I knew he shouldn't be more than a few minutes. Sitting here alone, he edges closer and closer to my car. I start to get really scared and start shaking a bit. I feel a rush of relief when my boyfriend finally returns, but I can't help but notice that the guy is still watching us. As soon as my boyfriend turns the corner towards me, the guy starts following him. I freeze up. I I have no idea what this guy is about to do. My boyfriend walks faster, the guy keeps pace, and right as he reaches for the car door, the guy starts making a fast grabbing motion towards his throat. I throw open my car door and starts blaring the car horn. The guy scalls at me and backs up to the wall. My boyfriend jumps in the car and peels off. I can see him as we drive away. His head is down, and he's muttering to himself. Man continues to visit's house after breaking in. I posted this on no sleep and was told it was a better fit here. Okay, I don't know if this is the right place to post this. It's a true story. I live in one of those shitty four complexes with my with my girlfriend S and her cousin D and Nola. It's a shotgun style and on the second floor, D mostly stays at her boyfriend's, so we typically keep her door shut. The thing is, is that we share a balcony next door to a vacant apartment, which can only be accessed by Dee's room. The bolt that locks the balcony is missing, so at the time, we used a ballpoint pen to keep it shut. Pretty dumb shit. Well, last Wednesday, probably around 6am, I pulled an all-nighter on the couch watching Orange is the New Black, which is surprisingly good. I hear something in Dee's room. It sounds like something fell over, but whatever, I'm high, spaced out, and tired. I don't feel like checking it out. Plus, her floor is uneven, shit falls all the friggin' time. But something doesn't seem right. I owe that to my girlfriend's cats, who are both staring at Dee's door with what-the-fuck expression. So, I get up, turn the lights on, and as soon as I reach for Dee's door, it opens and a head pops out. It's a young, because he was young, gay, because he was homosexual, black, because he was a black man. And we stared at each other for a good 10 seconds, until he says, I'm looking for my auntie. Is this her house? Now, at this point, a few things are going through my head. One, he could be as scared as I am right now. He's a skinny little guy, and I'm... And I'm not. Two, it's a four complex, so he could have made a mistake because they were all connected, right? And three, wait, wait, how, how in the fuck did he get in here? Suddenly it hit me. This guy must have climbed up our balcony or broke into the empty apartment on the other side. So me being a scared stone chunky guy decided to be reasonable for now, but stayed on my motherfucking guard. Well, clearly this is not your auntie's house. 
Would you like me to escort you out the front door? Then it gets weirder. When he tells me, he'll just leave the way he came. And for some reason, I let him and he did. I instantly check for shit missing in these room. Nothing. But I look at the door to the balcony. And notice that it's busted. And the ballpoint is broken in half. And this guy really forced his way in, right? I step onto the balcony to see how he freaking got up there. And I look over to the empty apartment side. The dude is trying to fucking hide behind the door now. Also glass. I'm getting pissed and defensive now. Your ID doesn't live there either. Get the fuck out of here, man. I'm not kidding. He nods and hurries into the apartment. Me being a stoned idiot. Assumed he must have come that way. So he's probably leaving that way too. Why didn't I call the cops? Because I was stoned. And if any anyone is familiar with the cops... You know, in these times, it's safer to, to do this all by yourself. Uh, just handle it on your own kind of thing. Well, almost a week goes by, and um, I replace the balcony lock ballpoint pen with a screwdriver, installing a legit lock tomorrow. My girlfriend has been giving me shit for not calling the cops immediately instead of doing nothing, which is completely fair, but he left, and nothing was stolen. Not a big deal. It's the Tuesday after... My girlfriend leaves for work, and I'm home alone smoking and playing Skyrim. A few hours go by, when I hear a knock on the front door. I open it. It's him. Hey, could, could I use your phone? Once again, I'm hide and paranoid as shit, but whatever, he can use my phone. If he bolts, I can chase the fucker down, plus it's the middle of the day, so I hand him my phone. But then he realizes he doesn't know the number he's calling. It's on his phone. Can I come in and charge it? Why I let him in? I don't know, but I did. In my head, I'm screaming, This fucking guy broke into your house. Why would you let him in? But I did. And I got weird. I turned off my game, put his phone on the charger, and I tell him to have a seat on the couch. The cats curiously sniff his feet. He doesn't like it, shrieks, and shoes them away. He looks through his phone while still holding mine, and then calls his aunt on my phone. Wait, what? Why my phone? Suddenly, I realize I still have my pipe and stuff out, Realize the room smells of dank and I'm really stoned with the stranger who broke into my house a week ago. I'm an idiot. I put my stuff away and start pretty much glaring at this dude with bloodshot eyes. Trying to hear what he's saying on the phone and it's just, yeah, okay, uh-huh, okay, etc. Then he politely hands me my phone back and asks if he can have some water. I pour him a glass. I hand it over to him and pull up my computer chair directly across from him. I was trying to make it as uncomfortable as possible for him. This didn't work. He takes one large sip as he looks me in the eyes and drinks it all. All of it in one gulp. What does this guy really want? Is he hitting on me? Is he going to kill me? No! He probably wants to steal my shit, right? Maybe he's sizing up the place. I look away and start texting my girlfriend. Then I wonder, who did he call? Maybe he's in on with some other guys who are planning to rob us later. I check my phone call's log, nothing. He never made a call. I look up from my phone and he's actually staring at me, smiling. Where does your auntie actually live, I ask. He does some weird, incomprehensible hand gestures and says, Like this, around here. What? This, around here. He repeats with the same weird hand gestures. Oh, okay, man. We stare at each other in silence for a long time. I don't want to take my eyes off of him for a second. And he's just staring right back at me, just smiling. Well, my, my girlfriend is coming back soon, and she'll probably freak if she sees you, so, um... He nodded and thanked me for letting him charge his phone, and I walked him out the door. This was yesterday. Since then, I've added two locks on the other side of Dee's room, and I'm replacing the lock on my balcony tomorrow. I know I should have called the cops the first time, and not let him inside the second time, but that's the creepy part. I was scared. But I just couldn't kick the guy out. Anyways, I couldn't sleep last night, and I probably won't tonight. I just been laying on the couch with a seven iron. If he does show up again and ends up in my house uninvited, I won't be stoned, and I won't be polite. Update. Alright, so I called the cops. They will be keeping an eye out for a possibly dangerous 57 to 59 young 19 to 25 black male with sandals, a black v neck black skinny jeans, and a fake Gucci purse. I forgot to mention, I got his name the second time, which is Colby.